Hi, in this video and in my lab, I want to put together a simple client VPN scenario where there is a VPN server and one VPN client. But I'm going to repeat that four times, each time using a different VPN protocol because I want to run a couple of speed tests and see which one is really faster. I mean, at least on paper, we are told that WireGuard is supposed to be really fast. Is it really though? I guess there is only one way to find out. So let's begin. First of all, I should point out that the VPN speed will depend on a couple of things. For example, the speed of the network connection all the way from the client to the server. So that even includes the local area network on the client side as well. For example, if the client is connected through a poor Wi-Fi connection, this is obviously going to be a bottleneck and the VPN speed cannot get any faster than this. Or even the internet connection speed on the client side as well as on the server side. So let's say if this side's internet is 1 gigabits per second up and down, but this side's internet is 100 megabits per second up and down, then this side could become a bottleneck. In my tests though, because everything is done in a lab environment, every single connection is going to be 1 gigabits per second, including the simulated internet connection. So we don't have to worry about any bottleneck as far as the connection speed is concerned. And the speeds we're going to see in the tests will depend on the type of VPN protocol that is used and also how fast the hardware that is involved can process the VPN code. Now, as you probably have noticed, the VPN server in my lab is going to be an ASUS RTAX86U. It has a 1.8 GHz quad-core processor with 1 GB of RAM. So if you have this particular wireless router or maybe something similar, then this video can give you an idea of how well your wireless router can also perform as a VPN server. Or even if you don't, you will still be able to see which VPN protocol is relatively faster. Now you might be wondering how am I gonna do the speed test. Well, first of all, I'm gonna connect the client to the VPN server. This should somehow virtually connect the client to this network as if it is kind of directly connected. Then I'm gonna run an iPerf speed test between the client and this computer which is the iPerf server. In case you are not very familiar with iPerf, I should quickly mention that it's a great tool for testing the throughput and speed of the network. Basically, you set up an iPerf server and an iPerf client, then you can easily test the speed between these two nodes. I actually have a whole video dedicated to that, so feel free to check it out if you're interested to know more details. All right, before trying any of the VPN protocols, I'm going to first run a speed test, but without a VPN connection. Now you might ask how am I gonna reach the iPerf server when I'm outside the network and when there is no VPN connection. The answer is simple because I'm gonna use port forwarding on the wireless router. The iPerf server is set up to listen on port 1212. So on the router I have set up a port forwarding rule to forward all the traffic coming towards port 1212 to the iPerf server. And on the client and in iPerf, I'm just going to use the IP address of the router and port 1212. Well, given that all the links were 1 gigabits per second, it looks like we were able to reach the maximum speed but without using a VPN connection and only by using the port forwarding, which is what I was expecting because doing port forwarding for a router is not that complicated of a task. I mean, when you compare it with handling a VPN connection as a VPN server because VPN involves authentication, encryption, decryption, and so on and so forth. Okay, now I'm going to use the PPTP VPN, which stands for the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol to connect the client to the server. PPTP is an outdated VPN protocol, which is no longer safe to use it. But I was just curious to see how fast it could be, so I figured I should give it a try. But in real world, I would never use it. Hi. 
187 megabits per second was the maximum speed I was able to reach, which is not good. Now I have another reason for not wanting to use the PPTP. I mean, besides it's very weak security. Next, I'm gonna use the OpenVPN. I already know it's not gonna be very fast, but I really hope it's not gonna be that bad either because I really like it. Only 189 megabits per second, which was barely any faster than the PPTP. Very disappointing to be honest. But on the plus side, it's a very secure and capable VPN protocol, unlike the PPTP. Next, I'm gonna move on to the IPsec, where Ike version 2 is actually paired with it. IPsec is considered to be secure and reliable, while Ike version 2 is very fast and stable. So let's see what happens. Four hundred twenty one megabits per second, which was more than twice as fast as the open VPN. Very impressive. But what about the WireGuard, which is the youngest VPN protocol here? And like I said in the beginning of this video, it is expected to be very fast. Wow, 700 megabits per second, which as you can see makes it by far the fastest VPN protocol here. I mean, we already know that these numbers are based on my testing environment, the hardware that I used and so on and so forth, and it doesn't mean everybody should get the same numbers. But that is overall very interesting. Because now I know if uh, speed is my highest priority when it comes to using a VPN connection, maybe I'm transferring huge files over the VPN a lot, then I'll probably want to go with the wire guard or the IPsec. But if speed is not necessarily my biggest concern, maybe I'm only using the VPN connection to add a little bit of more security to my internet connection when I'm using a public Wi-Fi, for example, or just to bypass internet censorship, then I'll probably want to go with the open VPN because it is very flexible and has a lot of advanced features too. Besides, when I'm using a public Wi-Fi, there is a good chance that the Wi-Fi speed is going to be even less than that. In that case, which is very likely, the Wi-Fi would be the bottleneck and not the VPN itself. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.